they will be filled with power and of strength and of the Holy Ghost. Let every word that I speak tonight be as you have ordained them to be spoken. Help me to speak as I ought to speak. Amen. Help me, Lord, with utterance that is fluent, Amen. eloquent, simple, Amen. and clear. Amen. Help me deliver within the timeline that has been given to me tonight. Amen. Let generations be shifted forever. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Good evening, everybody. Good One more time, help me greet your neighbor to your left and to your right. Tell the person, good evening. Welcome to church. All right, I want to go straight into the word of God tonight and I want us to do some justice in the conversation. I am praying that the Lord will help us cast light upon what is on his mind. This month has been themed our month of motions and movements of the spirits. And so that we set it in context properly, what we are really saying is that there is something called the motions and the movements of the Spirit of God to fulfilling the will of God. So the motions and the movements I'm really referring to about is that it is to bring us to the point where we can cooperate with the Spirit of God to do the will of God. The Bible says that and the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the earth. So we know that the Spirit of God is always a moving spirit. He's always moving. Someone said the Spirit of God is always moving. This Spirit of God is always moving. And is always moving to create things. To give life to the things that God has spoken. And we said at the beginning of this conversation that the word, the will of God, the plans of God, the purpose of God, the counsel of God and the word of God are all synonyms. The will of God is the same thing as the word of God. The word of God is the same thing as the purpose of God. The purpose of God is the same thing as the um, which are will, counsel of God. And, and then the last one which is the will of God is also the plan of God. So I'm, I'm literally just trying to help us see the connection between what i'm saying and how it applies to the general picture of things and tonight again we're going to journey further if you recall on sunday which was a build up to the conversation we introduced the discussion that the motions and the spirit of god is to bring us to that point where we start to fulfill purpose and um I won't want to go through Sunday's message again afresh. I'd like to encourage you to please catch up on social media for the details. But what we are trying to really do in this discussion is to bring all of us to a consciousness that there is a big plan of God. Last week Wednesday we were speaking about that. That there's a plan of God. There's a plan of God. Look at your neighbor from the person. There's a plan of God. You know, last week we said that the script of God is the scriptures of God. You know, it's scripture, it's scripted. And there's a bigger plan and it's all part of the plan. And we spoke to the subject, you fulfilling the plan of God. Do you remember we said something about that? If you look at the connection between what I'm discussing now and what we discussed last week, and um, that's last month I mean to say, you will see the connection that everything that God has blessed you with Everything that your marriage, everything is to make you fulfill the ultimate plan of God. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So the capital God has given to your life is so that you can fulfill his plan. And so on Sunday we spoke about finding you in the plan of God. And tonight I want to bring a titled message to us. I have chosen to title using your credibility for the plan of god using your credibility using you as to fulfill the plan of god anytime you read the bible you have the option of reading the bible as a reader or as a participant of the scripture 
you have the choice. When you read the Bible, you know, if you go for any event, you can choose to say, I'm watching what is going on, or I am part of what is going on. So, in every event, there are those that make things happen, and there are those that, you know, watch things happen. I want to invite you to the category of those that make things happen tonight. And God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. I said, God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. On that note, I said we will be talking tonight about using your credibility for the plan of God. And what I'm trying to really bring out is very simple. But we're going to have to journey through a few thoughts to arriving at it. Um, let's turn our Bibles firstly today to the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 13. Someone say, I love my Bible. If you love your Bible, can I hear you say it a little louder? Say, I love my Bible. Say, my Bible loves me. <laughs> Alright, well, in Matthew 5, 13, we're going to read it down to verse 16. Are you there? All right, everybody, let's read it together. If you're in church and you have the Spirit of God and you know you are, you are a child of God, let's read it together. Everybody, one, two... One, two, everybody, one, two, go. And let's read it properly with power, you know. You know, with life. One, two, everybody, one, two, go. The salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. You will not be good for nothing. Let's read on. But to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. Let's read on. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. That's next. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Father, once again, I receive utterance in Jesus' name. Alright, so on the basis of that scripture, let me dive into what I want to talk about tonight. We have been saying that the motions and the spirit of God is to achieve the plan of God. Everything you see the spirit of God doing, from the time when he fell upon the apostles in the upper room, to the time when he raised Jesus Christ from the grave, Everything you will see the Spirit of God do is to achieve His greatest purpose. God has a plan in mind. How do I know? He says in Isaiah 55, I know the thoughts, I know, beg your pardon, Isaiah 55 says that my thoughts, he says, um, how did he put it now? My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So let's go there, please. I, I, how did that just run out of my head now? It's different from Jeremiah 29 11. I want to quote that one. Then I'll quote Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah chapter, um, Isaiah 55 verse 8. Let's quickly bring it up. 55, 8. Sorry. Uh -huh. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's what it says. My thoughts. God is thinking. Someone say our God. Our God. Help me preach tonight. Say our God. Our God. Is a thinking God. <laughs> Excuse me. My thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. God is thinking. God is thinking. So what you are thinking may not be what he's thinking. God is thinking. What you are thinking, you remember Genesis chapter 50 verse 20? You meant it for evil, but God thought it for good. What they were thinking was that they were doing Joseph evil. But God was using Joseph to preserve them. What man thinks is not what God is thinking. So there are thoughts in God's mind. There are things God wants to do on this earth. There are things God wants to achieve on this earth. God is working today. Glory to God. And while you might be thinking that you are just out to fulfill your own necessities and your basic needs... God literally, if I will put it that way, is looking for partners to partner with him to fulfill his will. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
from time past, God has been in the business of engaging someone, some people, you know, using them to fulfill his master plan. You know, we spoke about Genesis 1, how that Adam fell. What did God have in mind when he made Adam? Just tell me, what do you think God had in mind? He had something in mind. Hello? God had something in mind. Just like God has something in mind for making you. You are not a byproduct of an ill-fated night with your parents. No. You think, or they might not know the purpose, God who makes children come. Do you know it is God that allows children come to this earth? So God is the one that gives life to every child. <clears throat> People can make love to themselves and not have a child for 70 years. Ask Abraham. <laughs> Let's start with that. For it to become a child, <sighs> God breathed life into it. For it to become a child, the Bible says, who is it that said a thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not approved it? For it to become a human being, for you to become a human being, there is a plan. Not mean well, sorry. Have a lot of volume a bit. Glory to God. Are we managing media well? We'll kill this together. Glory to God. Amen. And does not mean there's not something in God's heart. God, in his infinite wisdom, sits down, looks upon everything, and says, This is what I'm gonna do. However, the motion and the movement of that plan is controlled by his spirit. So from here to his plan, the one that controls the movement is the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm saying by that? That's where we got the word motions and movements of the spirit. The motion that moves God from where he is or what plan he is, the stage he is at, to the destination he's going to is by the spirit of God. Someone say by the spirit of God. Let me say it properly said by the Spirit of God. Pastor, how do you know this thing? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 says that no man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man that be in him. How be so no man knoweth the things of God, save the spirit of God that is from him? 1 Corinthians 2 11. So we must understand, is it there? For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Did you see that in your Bible? Only the Spirit of God can say, look, that's not my plan. That's not what I want to do. There are things you can be planning to do that you think is good, but it's not the will of God. There are things you want to achieve that to you, it is perfect, but that's not what God is thinking. So he's telling us that we should be interested in finding out what the Spirit of God is saying. Let us find out what the will of God is. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 17, it says... Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 He said, Wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the plan of the Lord is. Did you see that in your Bible? Understand. We need to understand what the plan of God is. In other words, when a man doesn't understand the will of God, he doesn't know, he's not wise. When you don't know the will of God for your life, you are not wise. The God that we serve of the Bible is a God of design and purpose. Most times, the God of the Bible locks his plan into a design. For example, the creator of this microphone, by the design of this microphone, has advised us on how to use it. Do you agree with what I'm saying? The one I just pulled off had advised us copy it in here by design you can tell purpose look at your design look at your design in case you are wondering but i don't know my plan what is god's plan for my life look at your design you are likely going to find your purpose from your design 
Praise the Lord. So God in his wisdom made purpose such that he is not going to have to always say it, but you can always see it by design. Look at this flat surface. You can tell that this thing, we can put something on top. God gave women two mammary glands, suggestive, and did not give the man the same thing. Man has his own, but it's not like the woman's own. We don't need to ask, please, who will feed, breastfeed the child? We don't need to ask. God gave Adam a beautiful woman. Did not tell him what to do with her. <laughs> he found out the rest. This is where they put this one. <laughs> this is where they put this one. Then, they were, hey. then uh, it has become child. He never gave them lecture. Purpose by design. Purpose by design. You can locate design. I mean purpose through design. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He didn't give him lecture. Just gave him. Just said, take woman. Uh -huh. The first thing was he was yearning rubbish. He said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. There was no father. There was no mother. Adam said, now shall a father, a young man, leave his father and his mother to come cleave with woman. You did not read it in your Bible. Who was the father and the mother? That is, he was willing to say any. They don't even have the first child though, but he was making a decree. Purpose by design. We can know the purpose of God through design. Adam saw the woman, he knew what to do with the lips. This is kissable. Nobody advised him. Say kiss. Before he knew what was happening, he inflamed the woman's stomach. Whatever that would mean. And to the glory of God, they knew that a push, the child came out. Who was there with them? It's called purpose by design. Design always shows you what purpose is saying. How things are structured. Romans 1 says that we understand the incredible things of God by the things he has created. We can look and say, Cat, this thing is for eating. This one is not for eating. We can look and say, this one is good. This one is bad. You can understand purpose just by the design. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? If you are seated today under the sound of my voice and you see yourself and you wonder what is my own purpose, just look at your design. How are you designed? How did God make you? What things irritate you? What things spark you up? What things get to your spirit? What are the things that make you cry when nobody's watching the film with you? What are the things that you respond to when you are alone? What are the things that provoke you? Your design is a pointer to your purpose. So we call the first thing I'm saying tonight that although God has a plan and a purpose for humanity, he locked it in individuality. Making sure that an individual has to get the plan. And he's saying that you you, you, me, everybody here tonight can locate the purpose of God for our lives through our design. Whatever you spend yourself doing, just imagine a jog, a jog or a basket trying to fetch water from the river. It was not designed for, it might look like a bucket, but it will waste its time. No matter how well you put a fish on a tree, it is a living thing that it will not do well like a monkey. The lion is the jungle, the, the king of the jungle, my dear. The monkey is the king of trees. Both of them are in the jungle, but one knows his own path. Ladies and gentlemen, you will struggle like an untalented person when you are walking outside purpose. You will function and malfunction when you are walking beyond your design. You are not designed to do some things, but you are designed to do some things. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my prayer tonight that the motions and the spirit of God will open your eyes. To your purpose and your design in Jesus name. So I bring us that great truth. Understanding purpose by design. Number two. You can also tell the cues of what happens. God will not always say everything. You are looking for how to open this door. And you find a key on the floor. Does it not connect that maybe this door is locked. And this might be the key. God will not say everything to you. You are looking for something. He will just put the cues there. It is you to make out of it. Don't forget, our God is a creative God. He is not compelled to do the same thing the same way. Just simple. No. He is too creative to be monopolized. Or to, to be monotonized. If there is a word like that. He is too creative. He will create a path in achieving the same result in different ways. Our God is a creative God. Give it to him. What you are trying to get done, he will get done in a thousand ways. He is not stranded because he missed the first path. If Google cannot be stranded, our God cannot be stranded. <laughs> if Google cannot be stranded, you cannot be stranded. 
Can I hear you believing? Amen. amen. I'm not sure if the right audience came to church now. Let me hear a better amen. amen. So God communicates our purposes to us by cues. He cues us. You will just know it. This is key. This is padlock. Open it. It's open. He doesn't say, my son, my son, open. He doesn't need to do that. God depends on cues. Now, those cues are inspired through interest, curiosity, desire, needs, circumstances, necessities. They might look like necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is God's skill or God's technique of producing the next level of invention. And I'm going somewhere with what I just said. It's a basis for the bigger picture. Because, for example, it is the necessity of music that makes us have variety of music. People are bored with one skill or one sound. Do, ka, do, ka, do, ka, do, ka. Something tells us, can we do, 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 ka, do, ka. Bottom makes us create some things. I get what I'm saying? <laughs> this thing is too tiring. Go. This sound will be like this forever. Do someone said, Let us cut. If you know Casio keyboard, you know the sounds are plenty on it. Necessity makes us create things. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I, I'm not joking. What I'm saying is very deep. I'm speaking on behalf of heaven. No? So when we get to a stage where we have exhausted the spirit of an idea. We should understand that the spirit of God is not stagnant. The spirit of God does not enjoy stasis. He wants us to move to the next thing. When we insist on that position for too long, just like the church, the church will stay on one beat, on one tradition for so long that they will not know that the spirit of God is about to move. And when it's moving, they will resist the spirit of God. This is not how we have been doing it. This is not how our church has been. How can you start today? So what happens is that most churches lost their membership because they did not follow the spirit of God. Looking back now, all these orthodox churches that we call orthodox, they used to be the spirit of God churches before. Catholic was the one we thought was the spirit of God. The spirit of God moved again. So those who said we will stay here forever. No problem. As an organization, God has given them the grace and they are still the largest Christian gathering in the world. Very true. That structure, I will talk about at another time. But talking about the spirit of God, he moved from the so-called Anglican, the, 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 there's one name they call them, the, there's, um, there's a, no, no, there's a name they call them as rebels. They call them rebels. And then they call them, and they, they call them, there was a name, I, I, I crave your indulgence, I forgot now. Eh? There's a name, in that film we watched, Henry, there's a name, I forgot him, please, just let's move on. They call them rebels. They revolutionists. They, they revolted against the Catholic Church, came out, created Anglican, Methodist Church, and you would think that, ah, what happened? With these new waves, all these churches, now they are clapping. Before there was no clapping, it was, I'm sure you know, so many, you know, me all the time, and everyone said, amen. The day somebody came and said, no, the church shall live by faith. Ah, which one is it? It was the Holy Ghost moving. But it was moving out of the necessity. Somebody said, there is more. Somebody said there can be more. And then he moved the church, broke the church out of the limitations of the orthodox. Brought the church into the realm of the spirits. They call them the Pentecostals. Uh -uh. Then they moved from Pentecostals again. <laughs> I'm coming there. Then they moved them from Pentecostal again. From the orthodox. And then they moved them to Methodist. Uh, which one is this one again? Eh, there's a method in this thing. Then they moved them again to the Calvaryans. Moved them again. And church history evolved. Do you know that if the Pentecostal radicals that we have today, charismatic from the Cadelics and Pentecostal rascals that we have today, if we don't move, we'll become an Orthodox church soon. That's what I'm trying to say. The movements and the motions of the Spirit. We are celebrating this. Let me tell you, if you don't know when the Spirit of God is moving, you will become the same Orthodox church of that time. God is talking to us to learn to follow His Spirit. To learn to be sensitive. I am the one behind this thing. Look at a beautiful church. I'm so grateful to watch it in my lifetime. That Papa um, William Kumuyi. WF Kumuyi. He's going back to the origin of his church. To accommodate some things he once condemned. Starting with television. 
is no longer seen as a devil box. Do you know how long ago the spirit of God has moved? He's just catching up. Do you know how long ago? Do you know how some people died believing that the television was the devil's box? Do you know how some churches have refused to take drugs simply because they believe it's anti-Christian? Some will not do CNS just because they feel that mm -mm, the Holy Ghost has moved. You are the one still looking for him behind. He has moved. My prayer is that we will not miss the Holy Ghost. So he moves and he's always a moving spirit. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Always moving. Always trying to bring us to a consciousness. But our minds will stay stagnant. This is not how it has been. But you are like you call me. Ben, you are smart. He has moved. There's nothing you want to do to it. The Holy Ghost is still moving. Some dances were forbidden in church before. Am I correct? Now we can dance them. We can even tell people, clear space, let them dance in front. Instruments before. What are you doing with instruments? After, Lord Jesus, come down. Holy Spirit, come down. After that, we go home. Now we can dance. We can do, eh, eh, ge, 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 ge. When did you start that? Under the same Holy Ghost. I want to ask you a question. Is it that the Holy Ghost just approved or we are just catching up now? You, are you telling me the Holy Ghost is coming late? Do you know that is not the plan of God? No. I, can, we, can we be? Yes, sir. Is the Holy Ghost just coming and saying, hey, the world has agreed over here. You people can start now. <laughs> Many churches don't get this. Many pastors can't handle the emotions and the movements of the Spirit of God. Many things will we get to the future only to discover they were never wrong before. By that time, those that were children of this world, Jesus said they are wiser in their own generation than the children of light. They would have benefited and moved on. You are just catching up. Hey, what did you say? It is, hey, if I had known, I would have got that, you know. When they were shouting it, did you believe? And we are the ones that claim to have the Holy Ghost. But because the Holy Ghost knows that these Christian people will frustrate him, he would rather use an unbeliever that does not send anything to achieve his grand purpose on the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying at all? There are things God wants to do that our religious minds will hold him down. If we don't rise up and cooperate with him, he will leave us behind. He will use somebody that you condemn and say you are preaching the gospel to. When no one catches the fire, bim, he's gone. Because, listen to me, much more than your spirituality is God's humanity. God wants to bless humanity more than making you more spiritual. So he does not mind using anybody to bring his plans for humanity to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying here? He does not mind using anybody he finds. Let me tell you, I said it on Saturday and it's true. Most of the things we are using in this hall today were not necessarily made by Christians. We don't even know who made them. And I can tell you, I've checked a few. Some of them were not made by. Your phones, how many Christians are there speaking in tongues? But we depend on our phones today. We are so grateful that there's a phone. But we have not thought about who are those that God led to creating. Or you want to tell me phone is devil again? Anybody that says though, is obviously not moving with reality. Am I making some sense? I mean the whole, your phone again? The hairstyles women make. How many of them are Christians? Music that we hear. Keyboard we play. Microphone I'm using tonight. How many of them are Christians? Fashion trends of the world. The YSLs. The Bottega Veneta. The uh, them Salvatore Bergamo. Call them their names. How many of them are Christians? Trending. And I'm simply saying to you, God will use an individual to introduce his movement on the earth. And as long as he's able to establish that movement, he's using it to advance the world. Technology has been a major use God has used to advance things in this world. Thank God for those that embraced it. What did God do with Isaac Newton? What did God do with other mathematics people that we, we celebrate today? Imagine if they never yielded themselves. What I'm saying to you tonight is that whoever has done anything great in this world has done it by the leading and the motions of the Holy Ghost and tonight you are receiving your own motion and leading tonight in Jesus' name. You also can do great things. The problem is that for as long as you are self-seeking, God cannot use you much. 
The secret to being used is to become selfless. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying? You know, this message comes to three, about three categories of people. People that just feel, ah, this thing pastor is saying is interesting. You know? People that say, eh. <laughs> and then, those that are saying, pastor, talk to me. I'm about to plug with this thing. Because there's a genius on your inside. That might not be music. It might be words. There's a genius, a light. Your competence, your credibility, what God has given you as your own light that God wants to use to advance your family, use to advance your community, use to advance your nation. Because God might not do it at the same time. What has trended in the past before, you might be the first person bringing it into your own community. By so doing, God is still being relevant to that community. Even though you are catching it late, but God is bringing it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? Imagine those that just started to catch telephone. You know before, the telephone GSM came to Nigeria 2001. Under the administration of um, Obasanjo. Yeah. But there were some countries you're already using it. Those ones have already moved. They are faces of God's plan. For example, those ones that move with the face of God, we can't say that they are, so to speak, better than those of us in the second face. So your family might not have heard about the Holy Ghost. Or they, your family might not have heard that we can come out of poverty. You are the one bringing it to your family that we are coming out of this thing. So it's as fresh as if the Holy Ghost just came. Do you understand what I'm saying? That your family did not know before. Don't feel bad. From where you are, you can start to make a difference. God made us on this earth to make us make a difference. To make us life world changers and life influencers. Such that if you don't do that on this earth, you are really not necessary. You must have made a difference in your family at least in your community at least hopefully in your nation and ultimately in your world and the secret to doing that is selflessness do you know that the uh, microsoft group as i heard i hope i'm correct i stand to be corrected public uh, announcement there but i think i'm correct i was told that you know the computer those of us that the computer science you know that the mainframe computer was what man was using before. Large things like this. And Microsoft, I think Bill Gates, especially, I'm not sure, but I can be corrected, decided, I want to make this thing available in every home. That was the vision. Selflessness. How do I move? Do you want to tell me it was the devil that suggested that to him? No. No, it was God. If he told a Christian, they are souls perishing. They are souls perishing. We have not led them to Christ. We are souls perishing. God said, are you the owner of these souls? You will do more with technology than this your souls perishing, shouting up and down. Yeah. God will create motions in your spirit as an individual. Take this thing to your family. It will look like a subtle thing. God knows what he's doing. Follow the motions. Follow the motions and the movements of the spirit. As he's pressing it in his heart, he said, move this thing so, to everybody's home. Guess what? While he was thinking of that, somebody else came and said, instead of these computers being in everybody's home, I want it to be in everybody's hand. Somebody was thinking of everybody's home, he was thinking of everybody's hand. That has multiplied results. By so doing, automatically you become rich. Riches was not the objective. It was fulfilling purpose. I'm simply saying to you, this little light of yours, that scripture we read earlier on in verse 16 says, let this your light shine. This your little knowledge. This your little selflessness. Do you know that your light, light can never be useful for only you? You can't control it. Once you have light, only you cannot use it. God is saying that your little light, use it so that men may glorify me. That light is what I call credibility. Your personality. Your individuality. Your beauty. Whatever thing you have is your light. How is God glorified? You know, today we look at technology and even though they never wrote God is great on it, we say God is great. Am I correct? Even though they never wrote Jesus is Lord on it, we say Jesus is Lord. How I will sit behind my laptop and I'm seeing 75 people on my screen. I can see what they are doing in their parlor. Hello? Ah, a friend of mine was telling me how they wanted to monitor people at work. 
said they will notice when you watch the film, when you logged out, when you came in, when you came out, they will see everything you are doing. Technology. Technology. There are places you go to, you just do like this and your door will open. Wonderful. 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 I know of scars. I know of some. You just do like this, spam, and the door will open. Ah! I know one of those scars we used to use. When we are approaching the light, we just come on. I'm like, ah! What is going on? Technology has made the world better. That is somebody's light. Where is your own? Where is your own? You say, Pastor, I'm not a technologist. I agree. But guess what? You can serve somebody another way. You can serve somebody another way. You don't have to be the Bill Gates. You can be your own name and shine your light. What are the lights we have? We have several. Last time I was talking about social capital. This is where this conversation about social capital can come handy. Where we're talking about how honesty is a capital. Your honesty can put somebody's challenges to rest. Just by being honest. Just by being focused. Can make somebody do his work well. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yeah. Integrity. Being trustable. These things are capital. And they are meant to serve you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Humanity will only be better when you unleash your capital. And let's take this conversation further. So having said so, your purpose is to save the world. Your purpose is to save the world. Your purpose is to save the world. God will bless you. His intention is that you will not keep it for yourself. In Genesis 18, verse 18 and 19, let's look at it. Please write these things down quickly. We are going to still cover some ground. Are we blessed tonight already? In Genesis 18, 18 and 19, God looked at Abraham and said in verse 18, can we start from 17? Please, just for context. Starting from here will not make it clear. 17, please. So you see, God will bless a human being and he wants that human being to use that blessing to complete or to perfect or to assist his plan. What has God blessed you with? What has God blessed you? There are some people that are not born again Christians necessarily. But they are fulfilling God's plan. Because they are yielded. They have what God is needing. The moment you stop thinking God is all about church, you start to see that God is outside the world. God created church so that he can train people to do what he wants the world to do in his own way. Did you hear what I just said? The church exists so that it's a training and equipping ground. Go and read it, Ephesians 4. I'm not the one that wrote it. That the church can become strengthened so that they can withstand the jazz outside. If you go outside without being taught, you become a casualty to the wicked ones of the devil. So we need to be empowered. Hallelujah. We need to understand how to gain all the fields of the world. Education, technology, music, sports. Um, what else do you have? Fashion, entertainment. Those are the fields of the world that God has decided the church should be trained for. And so when we step out without being trained, we become easy casualties of the wickedness of the world. In Genesis, I said you should open quickly. Let's go back there. 18 verse 17 to 19. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Don't forget, Abraham is one person. In Isaiah chapter eight if i'm not mistaken he said the lord sent a word to jacob and he says it has lighted upon israel what god said to one he said to all with the mind that if one person can catch it a whole community can catch it look at it god said to abraham saying that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him can you give it to me next he says, for I know him. Somebody say, God knows me. Say loud and clear. Say, God knows me. What does God know about Abraham? That 
that he will command his children and his household after him. Please, I want to remind you that at this time, Abraham did not have a child. But God said, I know this man. When he has a child, everybody will be commanded. Not, he will advise them, children, I know what you people are doing. No. Stop what you people are doing. No. I heard you people are not doing well. The word there is, he will command. Sit down there. This is the God of the Bible. Read him. Not, if you like, read him. When people will stop what you are doing, all these bad things you are doing. He will command. God is counting on Abraham's influence to be used to spread his glory. What part of your life can spread God's glory? Does God know you that you will do so? God was going to destroy Solomon and Gomorrah. He said, I know Abraham for he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. God has a plan. Someone say after me, say God has a plan. He wants you to be part of the plan. Help me preach tonight. Say God has a plan. He wants you to be part of the plan. He wants you to use your credibility for that plan. God is saying that I know Abraham. I won't need to come and be telling his household. Um, you people know that Abraham's God. I'm Abraham's God. No. Some of us, we need to know it today. That you are in that family to help that family be stable. You need to know it today. That without you in that family, everybody else is going to hell. And you will recognize them. They are in hell. What's your plan? Your children that came out of your loins. What's your plan? That's why God sometimes hesitates. This is not scriptural. This is not Bible. Law. This is me talking. Of, I feel. From giving some people children. He can't trust them. This one will lead them to Urusha. Small time. They will go and meet the shrine. This one will go and bath in water. When problem is too much, these ones will backslide. Because they look at the parents. This one is not serious. Small problem, it will backslide. God says, I know Abraham. Does God know you for that? Now, I want to say next thing here. That our purposes and our plans all join together to help humanity. This is my number two point tonight. Number one is that God will use all of his plan to he wants you to be part of the plan with your credibility number two our plans and, and god's plans for us will always go from our personal experiences to serve humanity to serve it's always about humanity any plan that does not serve humanity or damns the development of humanity is not god's plan whether it is church or anything many of the things god has in mind today we can like billboards but the first thing that they put on that billboard was a cigarette lady hey this one look at them all of them they are all unbelievers that thing has advanced humanity are you getting what i'm saying here it has advanced humanity anything that advances humanity in the favorable course is not of the devil you might not see god they might not come and say god you need but the finger of God is somewhere there. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Theater. Whatever. Whatever. And I, you can quote me on that. So we are saying here that God has a plan. And he wants us to make that plan serve humanity. Number three. That you can live fantastically empty. In the quest of a better life. Looking for things rather than looking for the purposes of God. You can live fantastically empty. That's how I put it. In the quest of a better life, looking for things rather than looking for the purposes of God. That your purposes can be, number four, no, your purposes can be discovered, delivered, or desired. Through interests, necessities, circumstances, and general curiosity. Number next, that should be number four.
Now, on Sunday, I said something a little controversial or maybe not controversial. I was saying that God doesn't want you to die and go to heaven. Let me just quickly speak to this a little. And I'm still saying it. I said what I said. I want to add this to it. That there is a heaven. I listen to what I'm saying. That God is using to camp all of us till he destroys this earth by fire. So why are we going to heaven? It's not home at last. It is to go and wait. The earth is judged. Satan is judged. We are coming back for 1,000 years. 1,000 millennial reign with Jesus Christ. 1,000 years. You will grow to 1,000. You will never die. What will you be doing? If you are Mumu now, your Mumu will still be there. Don't think that because you went to heaven and came back, you have just become brilliant. Oh, God. You will come back home. And the Bible says we are coming to reign with Christ. If you are not a sharp thinker, your mind is still your mind. Don't think that because you enter heaven, ah, bah! Oh, mom. That's why we cry that people die before their time. Because they were not given the chance to maximize their life. I stand to be corrected though, if you know better. But I'm speaking as one who has studied scriptures. We will, you will still remember this one. Ah, Folake, Romoke. You will still remember everybody with the same mind. If you are a dollar, then you will be now use dollar then. So heaven is a place where we are gathered till God judges the earth. We come back 1,000 years for the millennial reign of Christ. All of us that are saints, glory to God. Where we have received our reward, glory to God. You see that you are rewarded again. What are they rewarding you for? Just to enter heaven. No! You are rewarded for your good works here. It's what you do here that God will reward you there for. And what is your good works? The one that makes them give God glory. That men may glorify your father in heaven. If your works don't glorify God, there's no reward. Hello. So while I like that you come to church to do rehearsals, let me tell you that your coming to church is part of giving glory to God. Is that correct? But that's not the only reward God wants to give you. He wants to give you a reward for affecting humanity with your stewardship, with your campaigns, with your personality. That's what God will reward. Glory to God. I thought I would hear better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is bringing us back. That's why they call it heaven on. Have you heard that word before? Heaven on. Can you hear me? Heaven on where? So don't just say, hey, we've got to heaven to escape. Ah, oh, well, you are coming back. You are coming back. What you did not do before, God is going to give you a chance. Can you develop it? Now, there's no more devil. Well, you now told me what you will do there. No more. You vow spirit of darkness. I rebuke you back to the, the sea. I rebuke you back to the abyss. Abyss. Go back. Go back. There are no, there's no devil again. They've been locked for 1,000 years. You will now show me the spelling of boredom. If you don't know what to do with your life for 1,000 years, you will sell you. You will just tell Jesus Christ, can we just die? Because, because you don't know what else to do 1,000 years. <laughs> what are you doing? 1,000 years. You will now see that there was more to have done that your low mind did not allow you to expand on. As I said, I want to just branch on this so that I put clarity. So we will go to heaven. Praise God. Any sin that dies now goes to heaven and waits in the locker room. He's waiting for us to be perfected. But he's also slow because there are very few people making the will of God come to pass. Very few, very slow. Very few Mary saying to God, be it unto me according to your word. Very few Isaiah saying to Lord, here I am, send me. In your family, can you be Lord, here I am, send me. In your family, can you be, be it unto me according to your word. That's what we are saying. That using your credibility, your fine boy, to say I'm for Jesus. Can you do that for the Lord? That's affecting humanity. There are some people affecting the world, but for negative. There's no reward for that. 
Those that affect the world, cook rice for the people on the street. God will look at them, have mercy on them on this earth. But outside this earth, there's nothing for them. Outside of Christ, there's nothing for you. Now let me just quickly say this by the passing also. Somebody said that my passing gist sometimes used to be very interesting. I don't know. It's not deliberate. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way. Everybody, let's quote it together. I am the way, the truth. Hey, let's say it together. Everybody want to go. Can we complete it? He says, what? No man comment to the Father. Hello, people of God. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says, Jesus said, no man comment to the Father except by him. What does that scripture mean, pastor? Meaning that he never said nobody can come to God except by me. There is a difference between God and Father. He said nobody can have God as a father except by me. Because before Jesus Christ came, many people have known God. Moses saw God like this face to face. And it was not Jesus. But whoever have God become your father is by Jesus. But to pray to God, even Amrobas pray to God. You say, Pastor, what am I saying? I'm simply telling you, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life to having God becoming your father. Someone say, Father. father. The day you can say God is my father is because you have Jesus Christ too. Without that, Jesus is only your God. But Jesus never said nobody can have God without me. Everybody's praying to God. He's the father of spirits. Don't limit this your belief. Before you receive Jesus Christ, is it not the God you will believe in to receive Jesus Christ? So God is the God of all, but the father of some. He's our father. He's my father. He treats me differently. I'm his son and I'm his servant. Glory to God. We are not orphans. We are children of the most high God. So we take joy in working for him. Not because he's beating us. I'm his son. He can't chase me away. It's too late. Pastor, how do you know? First John 5. Go and read it. Don't you read your Bible? Don't ask me questions that you know the answer. Go and read your Bible. And anybody that has the spirit of God knows that I'm speaking by the spirit of God tonight. So he's our father. Don't be despising people that because you don't have just Christ in your life, you don't know God. It's not true. I'm not trying to be controversial. Though. I'm only saying as I'm led by the Spirit of God. And that's why I pray that the Lord should make me speak as I ought to speak. So I believe I'm speaking as an oracle of God. Don't condemn anybody because they don't believe in your just Christ yet. Does he believe in God? He's on a good step. He's on a good step. That he needs to know God as his father is a revelation of Jesus Christ. That you know him doesn't mean that you are better. You're only privileged. Then I said that men like Daniel, Jesus, Esther. Imagine if Esther did not yield herself. Some of us are in the office today. Imagine if you don't yield yourself for the Lord. Or you are not discreet. You don't know how to mention anything. And it's what let us pray. Let us pray to show you are spiritual. Let us pray. It's not let us pray you used to wound people. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? To prove that you are spiritual and to help your emotional conscience. That you are in touch with the Father. Um, it's not everything that is let us pray. Sometimes you need to have practical wisdom on the job. Now, there is a time for prayer. I'm a man of prayer. Don't tell me what I know. So I'm not despising the place of prayer. But don't use spirituality to intimidate humanity. Let people be able to receive your spirituality sincerely. You are in the office, everything. It's because people are not born again. You don't know the God I serve. Oh, yeah. Um, relax. Um, relax. Your works will show for you. Your light will shine. Let it shine so that people can glorify your father. Not that when they want to see your father, they say, eh, eh, I know you are getting it, but we don't like your results. You know people can see you getting results and still hate you. Because of your attitude. So he said, let that light use your credibility. Use your competencies. 
Use your character. Use your communication to shine my light. Are you getting blessed tonight here? Use everything you have. Your style, your logo, your character. Glory to God. Be intentional about giving God glory. So we said, give advancements to the things of the kingdom. Every advancement is forged on by the convictions of convinced men. By the convictions of convinced men. Number four or number next, whatever number that is. You can scale up your purpose in life by the level of your yieldedness. You can scale up your purpose in life by the level of your yieldedness. And quickly we see that in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 and Luke chapter 1 verse 38. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, he said, and we asked, who shall go for us? Who shall we send? Then he said, here I am. Send me. God will ably use you more when you are available for him. Unavailable hands are people that God may not force to use. So it is your sense of yieldedness and say, Father, let me ask you tonight, those of us in this room, who amongst us here, musicians, would you like God to use to spearhead the next level of music in the generation? You. All you need to tell God is, Lord, here I am. Send me. And then God starts to draw your heart into a music piece. You start to hear something in the night. He will give you a song in the night. Then you notice that the song is not leaving your heart. And then suddenly, suddenly, let me tell you something. Anybody you see that is coming out with a fresh note, did not get it because he's handsome. They got it because they were yielded. That's all. Why can't he use you? So God will use that. Then Mary said her own. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. Be it unto me according to your word. What has God said about you? For example, some of us here, you are supposed to be mother of a leader. Some of us here, you are supposed to be the wife of a pastor. Some of us here, you are supposed to be pastors. And your pastoring is supposed to bring life to a generation. Where people can look at your Jesus and say, I would rather serve this Jesus. Use your credibility for the Lord. Can I hear your Amen. Never, tell, let, never let anybody tell you that you are too fine or too beautiful to be serving Jesus. They don't know who he is. So, it's yours to introduce him. I've said that before that your curiosity, your availability, your responsibility, your, your needs will help you locate your purpose. Number seven, the power of your influence must never be underestimated. Now listen to what I'm about to say next. It takes discipline to succeed, but it takes sacrifice to be great. I repeat, what does it take to succeed? Discipline. But to do anything great in this life, you need to be sacrificial. It is great sacrifice that leads to historic steps. Nelson Mandela sacrificed himself, sacrificed his family, you know the story, just to lead us to where we are today in South Africa. It takes great cost, great price, great sacrifice to be truly great in life. A great cost, a great price, a great sacrifice to be truly great in life. Number next. It is by the infilling of the Holy Spirit that the plans of God can give God glory. Don't forget that we are talking tonight about using your credibility for the glory of God. It is We might not change the whole world at once, but we can change the world one after another. Did you get that? We might not change the world at once, but one after the other. Family by family, we will change the world. But finally, your light has come. So, your response should be rising. What am I trying to say by this last point? By this last point, I'm simply trying to draw your heart and attention to the fact that everything I've said is not useful to someone that doesn't want to make a difference. Everything I've been saying is not for you if you don't plan. You want to just leave this out, marry well, have six children, you know, live in one house, have two cars and die like a child. Listen. 
you are not the one that owns this message. This message is for people that want to do something in their lives, with their life. That's the truth. God made you here not to just be a consumer, but to someone that will make a difference. You need to accept that responsibility. I'm telling you, sir, from tonight, this you're hearing this message. Notice I'm still speaking about God's plan for the individual. By Sunday, I will start God's plan for the family and the nation and, and community. By the third Sunday, I'll talk about God's plan for the nation. And by the fourth Sunday, I'll talk about God's plan for the world. This message, Sunday and today, has addressed you as an individual. What are the things God wants to move your family out of? For example, some of us have lived in a house for too long. You need to pack out. The emotions of the Spirit of God is telling you, move out. You say, no, me and the landlord, we are friends. He's my, I'm the one that signed his documents. In fact, he trusts me more than his children. You see your problem? You see, you are adjusting like a frog. You are settling down for stagnancy without knowing. At some point, you should know it's time to move. There's nothing wrong with the house. Move. Your spirit of God is a moving God. I know you should stay in a house and settle down for good convenience and all that. But don't settle down and say, this is our place. You see, we are the new landlords. In fact, the landlord, when he's traveling, he gives me the key of the compound. That's not your testimony. You should be moving every year. Can I hear your amen, please? I'm not hearing a resounding amen here. Amen. Whatever you are doing, don't stay stagnant. Move. Upgrade. Upskill. Change. Evolve. Some of us, the same hairstyle you've been taking since we're nursery two, the same hairstyle till tomorrow. Can't we even see a different picture? So we can take your picture at 10 and just put it inside your passport at 32. Can't you even do something different? Can't you look different? Move. Move. Everybody say after me, say move. Come on, I want to hear it again. So I say move. You should be planning to move. Move your career. Move your character. Move your mind. Move your possibilities. Move your resources forward. Let your light so shine. And glorify your father. Who is in heaven. Are you blessed tonight? This teaching comes to tell you. That the spirit of God doesn't want you to be stagnant. Whatever you are doing. And if you stay there too long. He has left you. If you stay there too long. He has moved. If you stay there too long. He has moved. If you stay there too long, as a church, notice we are moving. In the same auditorium, our conversations are changing. Am I making something? In the same hall, you know the pastor is moving. We are moving somewhere. Yes, it's deliberate. You can't be just there. That's how we are being. That is the God's shape. Where is Mary? Me back, boo, boo. I hear any weapon. Amen. My friend, will you move out of that place? move are you hearing what i'm saying tonight wherever you are that state where you are you can move you can move i'm not talking about just jumping and hibernating everywhere no that's what i'm saying don't get it wrong i'm saying move in your life from glory to glory the path of this justice moving shining brighter and brighter from grace to grace brighter and brighter can I hear your amen? amen? I looked at my life. The amount of cars have changed. I have moved. Sir. When you thought you still knew my last car, I will have to ask you which one? Which one? Move. Don't be stagnant. Apply for your visa. Move. Apply for a friend. Go somewhere. Move. Enter places. Amen. amen. You are the light of the world. And your family is depending on your movement level to bring us into God's plan. As an individual, we are instrumental to the global plan of God. Imagine if Jesus did not do what he did. Imagine if Paul did not do what he did. When it was time for Peter to move, Peter said, no Lord, I've never eaten anything strange. God left him. He said, took his, can't read it up, Acts chapter 10. You have never eaten anything? Don't worry, come up. Let's bow our heads in prayer and say, Father, help me advance. 
Help me make progress according to your will. Who is praying with me tonight? Open up your mouth and pray. I say, Father, help me to move according to your will. Help me to move according to your will, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you are saying I should do, help me to move. Lord, I receive 